Hello. Welcome back to another pen talk. Today we're going to be looking at a pen that um, probably very few of you have ever heard of, let alone seen. And I'm very fortunate to have a pen community in a large town near me. And uh, we have a great relationship in the community. Each of us have our own kind of interesting perspectives that we bring on. And we sh we're very sharing. And one of the members of the uh, pen group um, has uh, provided me with an interesting pen. Um, the shape is certainly familiar. The uh, material is certainly fairly unique from my experiences. It has a lot of pearlescence in it. Uh, this may or may not come out in, re in relationship to my chatoyancy video, but I would say there's less chatoyancy here and a few hairs than there is pearlescence. But it is a beautiful color and it really pops in this sunlight. Um, sunlight, uh, first time I've seen the pen actually in, in bright sunlight, so even I'm amazed about this uh, acrylic. The machining hand turned is, is excellent. Um, there's a website, Frank Underwater, which uh, we'll give you some links to, and he has a good review on this model. And the maker is Live In You. It's a Taiwanese pen maker. And uh, he has an excellent uh, review of this model. And this particular pen is shown in that review. It's an unscrewed cap. You know, it's a stateless design. It's been around for a long time. And uh, we'll compare it to some of the vintage models. As you can see, it fits nice in the hand. As Frank describes, the section here is uh, fairly on the small side. It works with me. I think I have more medium-sized fingers than anything else. Um, it does post, as this type of design usually does. It's a relatively light pen, so posting doesn't really change the balance. I think it actually evens out the balance a little bit. Uh, the clip is very nice and unopposing. Classic design, and that's to me this pen screams classic. We have a logo stamped into the top of the clip there. The other thing that makes this brand stand out a little bit is they use Schmidt nibs, so. Uh, they go to one of the classic German pen manufacturers to get a nib which writes consistently smooth, even, you know, it's a, it's a good writer. You're not going to get any flex or character out of it, but for every day-to-day -day writer, it, it works very well. So uh, Frank relates this design and shape to the Edison uh, Nouveau Premier, but as a vintage guy, I'll go back to the original creator of this balanced design Schaefer. So I have two examples here which I just brought about to kind of show how uh, there are similarities in the shape and design. Um, you know, a, a classic clip design, um, no finials, you know, the material is even from the very top of the pen to the very bottom of the barrel. Um, interesting and all these three have vertical striping in it. Um, that was a classic also of, of many of the Schaefer balances made in uh, late 20s to late 30s. Uh, obviously the acrylic is quite significantly unique in the live in U pen, but it's still, you know, to me the similarities are more apparent than than they are with other types of brands. No cap band, which is again, um, I think a great design trait that uh, modern pens have seeming to be uh, using when it's appropriate. Posted, these pens continue to have similarities. Now they're again, almost exactly the same length posted, have a similar size nib on them. 
Uh, the characteristics and design of the nibs are unique. I mean, Schaefer was known for their Dream Touch nib here. Schmidt nib has its own interesting uh, writing characteristics. And this is the lower end version of the Schaefer pen. Not a lifetime, not a Dream Touch nib, but it's just a junior. Uh, these two have ink windows, which was a popular feature uh, back in those days. But the sections on the Schaefer's that I have are all black sections pretty much independent of what the material is in the barrel and the cap. It's just a basic cartridge converter pen. It's a Schmidt converter, so international standards uh, would work in this. Um, I don't know what ink is in here, so uh, and there's not much left, so we're going to flush it out and I'm going to put in a, a Robert Oster ink that I think is appropriate. But I still think it's just an uh, amazing amount of pearlescence it shows through this material, especially in this uh, interesting uh, fall strong sunlight that we have coming in the window. I got a, a new tool for looking at the inside of fountain pens. It's a nice small flexible LED light that you can turn on easily. We're going to use this to explore the live in you cap. First, going to have the light shine completely through the cap. And some of these stripes are more transparent than others. So that uh, throws an interesting light on it. No pun intended. Oh, well, yes, pun intended. Now we're going to insert the light into the cap. And what you can see is there's two different internal diameters which I think work very very well to seal this cap when you cap the pen to seal it very well against the section and so far I've not had any issues with it drying out you can see how the different translucent properties of these stripes are in this pen uh, a beautiful combination the pen fits fine in the hand unposted and it's extremely light and we showed you those measurements it's under 10 grams the caps about six grams and it posts nice it posts securely i'm not worried about it cracking i'm not going to jam it on there it uh, slides in i think there's a lot of contact area here again i think the pen has been machined and designed for writing with it post it I think you can hear this is very smooth, requires no pressure to write. And it has a little bit of line variation. It just kind of squeezes out more ink. This is not a nib that you're going to be putting pressure on to, to flex, but it's just a pleasure to write with. This is what I would call a great everyday writer. Lays down a nice patch of ink, a very blue ink, almost bluer than frankly blue. So I give this pen an extreme thumbs up for design, manufacturing, construction, and putting a nice nib on it. So hopefully you found this interesting to look at a pen that you uh, may, may never see. So, uh, but you know, I think all of us enjoy all the variety of pens that are out there in the world and uh, getting a chance to actually see them in action. So thank you for watching. May you have many great writing experiences. Explore pens, inks, and paper. Until next time, bye.